All right, let's take a look at the big numbers in the battle of two big boys, Ayala versus Moldovsky to kick off Bellator 239. You can take a look at what I'm talking about. Look at the weight difference, 261. Ayala's a big, big, heavy, strong guy. Moldovsky's 229 fast and can move well. With the official introductions, here is the official international voice of Bellator MMA, Mr. Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Bellator MMA Live on Paramount Network from Windstar World Casino and Resort. We get underway with heavyweight set for three five minute rounds. And now, first, introducing the blue corner at six foot one, weighing in 229.7 pounds. His professional record eight wins, just one loss, fighting out of Study School, Russia, presenting Valentin. Moldovsky. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot two, weighing in 261.6 pounds as a professional. 11 victories, seven defeats, fighting out of Porterville, California. Harvey, I can charge of the action, your referee, Blake Grice. Blake Grice has been assigned to this heavyweight encounter. The first of our four fights comprising Bellator 239, the main card. All right, here we go, you ready? Ready, fight! Javi Ayala in the red gloves, Valentin Moldovsky in the blue gloves. Ayala still working full time as a forklift operator at Walmart. I guess it's apropos that in his biggest victory, he beat Frank Mir against the wall, John, and looking to continue that momentum going into this fight against the dangerous Moldovsky, who has won three in a row, all three victories coming here in Bellator. Nice. Take down by Moldovsky, taking Ayala onto the ground. He's in side control position. Ayala needs to just take his time, but work his way out of this position. He cannot stay here under a very good North fighter. South almost here for Moldovsky, who has a armbar, rear naked choke, and guillotine choke submission win coming from Stary Oskol, the hometown of the legend Fyodor Emelianenko. No surprise, he represents Team Fedor and Alexander Nevsky Sports Club, so he gets to sit under the learning tree of one of the all-time greats. When you look at Moldovsky, he, he utilizes the same things that made Fedor so good. Speed, quickness, power in his hands, and a very good submission game. And while Ayala knocked out Sergei Heratonov in your record fashion, he says that the win over the former UFC heavyweight champion Frank Mir, by far the biggest of his career, but he's in tough so far against Moldovsky, about to be taken down for the second time. Yeah, Ayala did a great job of working himself back to his feet. Moldovsky didn't care. Just kept working, brought him right back down. He's got an arm triangle if he's able to switch to that side, but that fence is going to make it very difficult for it to work for him. He's getting there. All four wins by KO or submission for Moldovsky have come here in the opening round, and he's threatening Ayala with the arm triangle. You're seeing Ayala starting to push that arm. That's telling you he's starting to feel the pressure of it. But the problem is if Moldovsky can't change the angle. He wants to bring his hips at that angle across him and wasn't able to do it. Ayala survives, gets short. back to his feet. Ayala has been submitted once in his career via rear naked choke. That came against Alex Huddleston at Bellator 139 back in June of 2015. But Moldovsky on top of Ayala at the midpoint of the first frame. And Ayala, Moldovsky looking to put the hooks in momentarily, taking Ayala back down to the mat. And all of this, this, this is the type of work when you're the bigger heavyweight. Ayala's got, he's got some quickness to him. But when you're working hard to get back up and then you're just put right back down to the canvas, it gets very, very frustrating and it just mentally wears you down. 28-year-old Moldovsky began training Sambo and Judo at 18, a Combat Sambo world champion in 2018. Give us the Coles Notes version of what Combat Sambo is, John. Combat Sambo is plain and simple. It's MMA done with a gi, headgear, you know, shin guards, but they go after everything. Full strikes, full submissions, 
Combat Sambo is as close to MMA as you can get. A plethora of takedowns here in the opening frame for Valentin Moldovsky. Watch the back of the head, careful. Moldovsky multiple times has worked to get his hooks in, but he, every time he tries to step in with his hook to get the back of Javiala to control the position, Ayala is just a little bit too big. Closes that gap. Moldovsky back to a hip ride. Ayala thought that the layoff since his victory over Frank Mir had its upside for a year and a half. He's been able to focus on improvement. He said he wanted to look a lot sharper. Well, so far, his offense being muted by Valentin Moldavsky's Velcro grip. Yeah, every time Javi Ayala works hard to get himself back to his feet, you see Moldavsky take the leg, sweep him out, bring him right back to the ground. Under a minute remaining here in round one, Ayala being forced to expend a lot of energy thus far, and again he goes down, hits the deck like a card dealer, as the rap god Eminem would say. Beautiful trip right into side control for Valentin Moldovsky. Side control by Moldovsky. Short right hand to the breadbasket of Ayala. Under 20 seconds now remaining in the first round, and it's been all Valentin Moldovsky. Ayala surviving a very tough opening five minutes. Here's the takedowns of Moldovsky. Brings him backside, right into side control position, and multiple times you're seeing him take picks. Javi all up, slams in the ground, and then a light, nice trips that ended up putting Javi Ayala back to the mat every time he got to his Ready? feet. Fight. Round at number two, Moldovsky first met Fyodor Emelianenko back in 2015. It was at the Russian MMA Championship held by the Russian MMA Union. Emelianenko was in attendance and invited Moldavsky to train with them. Needless to say, Moldavsky calls it the greatest honor of his career and uh, a great start. Five for five when it comes to takedowns in that first five minutes. Yeah, but for whatever reason, you see it. Moldavsky's able to get his hands around the big body. Oh, nice by reversal Yella. by Yella. Getting quickly back to his feet this time. Looking for a judo throw, but again, the weight distributed by Moldovsky puts Ayala on his back. That's just technique, Moral. You're looking at a guy trying to muscle an individual who's using proper technique. Technique's gonna win just about every time. Moldovsky attended okay. university, earning a degree in law. Ayala might want to consider suing his takedown defense. <laughs> right now, Moldovsky's making an easy case for these judges as far as what they're seeing. He's just dominating the action, putting Ayala on the ground, hitting him with short, heavy shots. Ayala working hard, trying to get back to his feet many times. Does, but then ends up getting put right back down. Very frustrating moment if you're Javi Ayala. Ryan Bader, current Bellator heavyweight champion. In fact, he's a champ champ. He'll defend the light heavyweight strap May 9th in San Jose, California against Vadim Nemkov. But Moldovsky's teammate. Absolutely, and uh, Moldovsky would love to uh, work his way to an opportunity at that heavyweight crown and uh, has looked highly effective thus far in this matchup against the veteran Javi Ayala. And it's clear from what Moldovsky is doing is they had the game plan. Hey, we don't want to stand on the outside and throw shots with a guy that's got as heavy a hands as Javi Ayala. Javi can put anybody out with one shot. We're going to stay glued to him. We're going to take him to the ground. We're going to make him work. And we're just going to try to wear him out. Right down. 
All of these takedowns are as smooth as a sifter, a salted caramel whiskey, man. You just, it's just flowing. Look at you with the wonderful analogies <laughs> and metaphors. And I, I know a guy it. who likes his whiskey out in the, there you uh, go. That's out I in the state of Tennessee. Two minutes remaining here in the second round. <laughs> and uh, Ayala could maybe use a stiff drink if this continues, my friend, because he is getting manhandled by Valentin Moldavsky, the 28-year-old who is eight and one and a perfect 3-0 and here in Bellator. Now these takedowns, he's just all technique, waiting for the opportunity, sweeping the leg out, nice trips, picking him up at times, dropping him down, just putting on a takedown exhibition. Ayala, he started wrestling in the seventh grade. He continues with the sport at Porterville High School. We also competed in track and field. He ran the 100 meter dash as well as throwing the discus and the shot put in. It's Moldavsky though who pins. Ayala along the fence. Take your fingers out of the cage, thank you. And the referee warning Ayala for having his fingers inside the uh, cage. And again, just bringing him back over. And you're looking at game planning for a fight. This is just a perfect game plan if you're going to fight Javi Ayala. Stay away from his strengths. Put him in the positions where you can dominate. I didn't. I didn't know Thackerville was Ric Flair country. You hear those rules? <laughs> hear the rules. Well, Valentin Moldavsky is continuing to wear down Javi Ayala under 30 seconds left here in the second round and with heavyweights of course you always talk about the gas tank yeah but we have seen Moldovsky multiple times he has no problem going 15 minutes and going 15 minutes hard but will Ayala have a problem that's a difference with as much weight has been on him and all the shots he's taken it's wearing down third and final round straight ahead here at Bellator 239. Thus far, Javi Ayala has been subjected to a Moldovsky mauling. Back up just a bit. You ready? Fight! Ayala in the red gloves, Moldovsky in the blue gloves, third and final round. And we talk about a mulling, we talk about the takedowns. What about the edge in strikes for Moldovsky? Oh, edge in strikes, come on, to take a look. It's only a difference of. 90 to 5 thrown and 59 to 1 landed. Even the Elam ending wouldn't help Ayala in that equation. As we begin the third and final round, how can Ayala help himself try to get back into this fight? You know, he's got to stay out of the clinch situations. Every time he gets into a clinch situation, Moldovsky's able to work his way into getting his hands together. And when he does, He's taking Ayala down with a variety of different takedowns. Ayala has not been able to stop him, I don't think once. Go to your knees. You gotta use your half guard. Use a half guard sweep. Use a half guard sweep. You gotta get that locked down or bring your knee inside. Hey, you gotta go locked down or bring that your right knee inside to create space. If he gives you space, put the right knee inside, Javi. Or go, uh, try to get that locked down. Put that under it. You gotta get right now you can you hear Javi Ayala's corner talking to him about getting a lockdown on that leg. He's gotta move his hip position to make that happen, which he just did, but then didn't do the lockdown. First of back-to-back -back heavyweight encounters to kick off Bellator 239's main card. Still to come, we will see the 8-0 Tyrell Fortune face the 12-6 and Tim Johnson. And by the way, I thought 12-6 wasn't allowed in MMA, John. You're absolutely right, it's not. You've got to change that record. And again, Moldovsky looking to finish Ayala off with a potential arm triangle choke or a side choke for you catch wrestling connoisseurs. Go. Moldovsky just creating a lot of pressure, using shoulder pressure. 
Now posturing up to land heavier shots. That's what gives Javi, whenever you have that separation, that's going to give you your moment to try to get yourself back out of the position. And Mogovsky feeding that right hand under the armpit of Javi Ayala, trying to uh, do to Ayala what, what was done to his coach, Fedor Emelianenko, by Dan Henderson. Exactly. When you, it's so it's so hard to explain, but when you don't see the shot, those are the ones that hurt you. And when that comes from underneath the arm, you never see it, and all of a sudden you're getting just, as you would say, what is that, snobber blocker? Oh, no, actually, it's my, <laughs> my good friend from Oklahoma, Hall of Famer Jim Ross, who uses the term slobber knocker. Under two minutes left here in the third round. Hasn't exactly been a slobber knocker, but it has been domination by Valentin Moldovsky. And Moldavsky is becoming a tattoo on the body of Javi Ayala. Javi has not been able to stop anything really that Moldovsky has tried. He has gotten himself out of the submission attempt, but again, the cage was a part of that because Moldovsky was not able to create the angle that we would want to make that choke tighter. When you talk about the toughness, the durability of Javi Ayala, again, 6'2. Family working a full time job and yet still hungry. But tonight, it's Moldovsky who's been feasting with the takedowns and with top control, smothering Javi Ayala as we head into the final minute of this fight. Well, Javi Ayala never has had any quit in him. He never gives up. He's always going to look to find that way to get that victory. It's just against a guy that is technically as good as Moldovsky. When you get caught in these positions and you're just working hard to get out, you use all that energy to get yourself back, and then you end up right in the same position. Uh, it's just one of those nights you go, man, I just can't seem to get anything to work my way. Moldovsky's 10th professional fight, his lone defeat came in Japan for Ryzen Fighting Federation, New Year's Eve 2016, when he lost via split decision to Amir Ali Akbari. I don't even know if I said it right the first time. 15 seconds left here in the fight. Ayala looking to get back up to his feet. Did it. And wants to deliver the mother of all Hail Mary strikes. But Valentin Moldovsky has this one in the bag. We'll get the official decision when we return to Windstar World Casino and Resort here in Oklahoma. Valentin Moldavsky looking to remain unbeaten in four Bellator MMA fights. Michael C. Williams has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we're going to hear three judges at cage side. Your first judge, Sal D'Amato, scores the fight 30 to 25. Judges Jaron Bellow and Derek Cleary both see it the same 30 to 24. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Valentin Modovsky. How do you spell dominant? M O L D A V S K Y. Valentin Moldovsky now 9 and 1, 4 and 0 oh in the Bellator MMA cage after smothering Javi Ayala and using takedowns to secure the victory. Let's go to Big John McCarthy. I'm here with your winner, Valentin Moldovsky. Valentin, you made a decision to stay close to Javi Ayala to avoid his big strikes and bring him into a grappling match. Is that your plan? Yes, it's my plan because I see his fight with Sergei Haritonov. And I think I rested, wrestling him and grappling. That's my plan. I don't think need to strike and stay with him. Just needed to stay smart, stay on the ground, and try to get the submission. Did you think you had that arm triangle in the first round? Yes, I think I do submission. But he very strong. He can uh, right hand like this, and I can't. <laughs> Push. <laughs> very, strong, very strong guy, yes, that's why I can't. He's very strong. That was an outstanding performance. You dominated that match. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Valentin Moldovsky.